Hello everyone, it's Justine. Today I'm going to show you three different projects using the Envelope of Wonder collection. This is such a fun one because again, it is seasonal. There is the Halloween Wonder, Christmas Wonder, Autumn Wonder, which is this one. Envelope of Wonder, which shows you the envelope, which I'm gonna to get to in just a minute here. Sentiments of Wonder, which are a better press sentiment collection and then there's also the envelope of wonder sentiments which is a stamp set so there's all sorts of things that can be, there's all sorts of dies that can be used to make a card for all the holidays around the year so at the beginning of this video i'm going to show you how to make the envelope just so if you're here to learn how to do that you can get that over with and then you can stick around for the rest of the video to watch me make actual products projects so to start off you're going to need two of these <laughs> so I actually wrote on my dies I wrote x2 which to me means times two one and then half of one so what I did was I die cut out this first piece and this is going to be my main piece so depending on how you want your envelope to be is what's going to depend on the side you want up for example, the project that I'm doing right now, I'm going to have all of these little bits and bobs coming out of the envelope, so I want the cut edge to be facing down, because that's a little more rough. So that's the back of the, the piece. But if I wanted the envelope to actually be a true envelope, I would want the cutting edge to be on the front, because I'm going to glue things on the top to make it an actual envelope. So that's what I'm going to do right now in this video. Then the second die cut is this full piece again. So pretend I have two of these. And then you're going to take, then you're going to take this die, and what I wrote on here was one X, so use once on half of the big one to get the bottom part. So to get this piece, you're going to take one of these and line up this cutting edge here with the etched line that's on the envelope. So right about there, and then run it through your platinum, and you'll end up with this piece. So that is what makes the main envelope piece, like so. And so I'll quickly glue that on. Wait, I'm making an envelope, so I want the cutting edge up for this one. And to make it a functional envelope, I'm just gonna put glue on the absolute edge and not in the center. So it can be used as a pocket or an envelope to put something in it. If we put glue in the middle, it would not function like that. And then it just kind of line it up on the sides. Then I'm going to fold this on the etched line that is on this piece. Then I'll use my bone folder, which is not really a bone, but my bone folder to make it a hard edge like so now it is a functional envelope like this to dress it up though you can take this piece again so that's the cut piece that you would cut out to make the bottom piece this is the negative space like so and then you're going to fold this bottom piece like that and add some glue and this is going to give the illusion that the envelope is folded paper. Just look at how that one piece changes it from just a pocket to an envelope. And there is a little slit in there so you can go ahead and add your top of the envelope into there if you wish, kind of like that but I'm gonna leave mine out because I am going to finish off the top by adding this piece and that really is to just cover up some of that rough edge. And this is made with this simple die, just like that. And then you have an envelope. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I would love to help you out, especially if you get stuck with this one since it is a little bit of an assembly moment. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started on the fall card, which is what I'm super excited about. And then I have two cards at the end that I love, so I can't wait to show you those. I will just assemble this envelope as we're as I chat here. 
So, you guys, <laughs> if you saw my announcement video, you already know the news. But if you haven't, make sure you check it out so you can see more details. But I am releasing a collection with Spellbinders. I know. <laughs> I am so, so excited. I can't believe that it's kind of all coming together now. It's been about a year's process and I am just so excited. I can't wait to see what everyone is going to make with the collection. I just know that it's going to be so fun to see because everybody is so creative and they just people are just able to make amazing things out of just a few dies and stamps so check out my announcement video I'll put a little card up here for it and then you can check that out I will also have my collection linked below currently it is in the coming soon section of the spellbinders website so you can't buy it yet, but you can go stock it and see everything that's in it. <laughs> but it will be for purchase on September 10th, which is so thrilling. If you are wondering what it's all about, it's all about sports. So you can make customized jerseys, have different sports equipment. It's really just a fun, sporty collection that is really great to add to your collection of dies. All right, to add all of the little bits and bobs, I thought I would show you how to put some of them together. They're kind of self-explanatory, but we, I'll show you anyway. So for the pumpkin, we have the top that has the vine, and that's gonna go on first. And then after that, I'm going to add the top that does not have the vine and that gives just a tiny bit of dimension and you know that they say the beauty is in the details and this is I think what they're talking about because all these little details are just really pretty and I think Spellbinders does such a good job at giving those options for us so we can make really pretty things anyway there is the pumpkin even just that alone is just so pretty so you can make all sorts of fun things okay since i already did the pumpkin i won't do that and uh, this long gourd is pretty simple it just has a stem i suppose you could use the curly one if you wanted but you'd have to do a little bit of modifying the curly one's really meant for the pumpkin next this little mushroom I die cut out a back piece for the spots first so I'm gonna put those on like this and then just kind of position this back piece like that so when I put it on the white the brown shows through which is just kind of sweet oh I did that backwards <laughs> I'm gonna put on the white part on the whole back and then the browns going on the center like that and then the brown goes right here like so that must be for something else anyway <laughs> the mushroom that goes there and then the stock of the mushroom is going like so it's going to go right about there just like that just a really sweet little mushroom okay then we have these bigger acorns, which are kind of simple. Just put the top on. And the top has kind of a cross-hatched look to it, so it looks really neat. I did go ahead and add some liquid glue behind the acorn, just like that, so that piece would not fall out on me. But I suppose if you wanted, you could layer a different color behind there and get some dimension and some color going. But I chose just to leave it be the same color. Maybe just like a shadow. I think it'd be so fun if they added an insert to the tool in one that was a gem picker. I'm really kind of over the wax tip things, but it's what I got, so I'm using it. <laughs> now my little acorn gets this top, which I tried to put behind my mushroom, but alas, that is incorrect. Just like this. 
This little acorn is so cute. I just love how dainty that is. That mushroom I'll put together off camera. It's exactly like this one. It's just a double. This mushroom I'm going to put together a little differently. I kind of had trouble figuring out kind of the reasoning behind the layers. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else, but I know this white piece goes behind the dots like this. And then that goes on to the red with the ruffles. But then to add it onto here, it's going to be a little tricky because that is a very thin edge. So I'm going to add the glue to this piece and then just kind of hold the white bottom part in place for just a minute so it has a chance to kind of stick and hold. I think it might have been just a tiny bit easier if they would have made this bottom white piece solid on the top, but I don't know, maybe they did. You know what? They did. <laughs> I was the one that cut. That's right. <sighs> Don't listen. <laughs> I was the one that made it complicated because I wanted the white speckles. That's what happened. Oh boy. <laughs> I prepped this card about a week ago, so my memory is failing me. This is definitely my favorite mushroom, though, because it has this little, little skirt if you will, on the bottom, which I think is so adorable and very delicate. This one is a very simple die. It just is three pieces and they layer like you would expect them to. Even though it's simple, it does have the detail though, because on this white piece, it has the little etched area and then on the brown piece it has the holes so you can see the white area through it. It's just again those details you know. Okay I'm going to finish putting the pumpkin and the other mushroom together on off of camera and then I will show you. Then we will assemble all of the little leaves and pieces. I just cannot believe how many amazing die sets and collections have come out this month. I am just kind of overwhelmed with all of them because I really am drawn to all of them, but especially these seasonal ones, like the Gnome Drive, the Envelope of Wonder, it just, they've just been really fun to look at and just see. Okay, for different placement, I do not really have one set plan, but I just wanted to make this look like it was exploding with fall and fall colors of all sorts of colors. So we'll just see what ends up kind of happening here. I'm just going to start with these kind of twigs. I'm going to start with these kind of leafy long pieces just to get them on the back. And I have two brown ones it looks like too. I think we'll layer them like so. Oh boy, I think I'm going to use that hack with the press and seal again. <laughs> I'll show you how it works on this one, but basically you just press it down, put your glue on, and then flip it over and gently peel up. I probably will be using this technique a few times in the video, so I'll just show it to you this one time on this video. For all of my gluing, I'm using Barely Art Liquid Glue. It's my absolute favorite for any kind of die cutting or gluing needs. I realize I put glue on the tips of these when they did not need it, so hopefully it will just dry and not be a problem. I'm thinking that's what will happen. And I could not decide if I wanted to pop this whole project on a 5x7 card or an A2 size card at the end, so I guess we'll just see. I know that there's kind of beauty in the simplicity of just leaving it as an envelope, so I might do that too. I don't know. It's going to be so full of dies, so I don't think it's going to be 
used as a functioning envelope, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, that looks so pretty already. I'm just loving the teals and the oranges. I just think that that looks super pretty together. Okay, I don't want things to look too symmetrical, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start gluing and just kind of hope for the best <laughs> with this top section. My vision was to have all the leaves kind of behind here and then have the mushrooms kind of growing out of the envelope, kind of like this, and then have the pumpkins and gourds kind of on the side down here. Let's see, I think I'll have the gourd like that. Maybe I'll just do those two and then have the acorns on this side. Maybe I'll put a pumpkin behind it. Oh yeah, okay. I might not use this acorn, but we'll see. So that's kind of the vision that I've got in my head. We'll see how it turns out. I'm actually going to put these pieces on now just so I can keep that in mind for leaf placement so I don't put a bright yellow leaf where I want my gourd to go. I might put it opposite so it kind of accents it without kind of hiding it, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Right now I'm like thinking a million miles an hour and I feel like <laughs> my words are not coming out very nicely. So bear with me. I'm purposely not going to add glue behind the vines of the pumpkins because I kind of want them to pop up and kind of be like a curly moment. So we'll see if they stay popped up or not. <laughs> Then with this little acorn, I do want to use a foam square and pop up the acorn. And it's the perfect size. <laughs> it's just darling. Oh, that is so, so cute. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave my mushrooms for the very end so I can tuck them into the actual actual envelope. Now I'm just going to arrange the leaves so they don't clash with the colors that I have going on down below. Wow, that was a lot of leaves. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay, I'm just gonna hide this little acorn in there and then I will tuck in my mushrooms. Wow, this has been quite a project. I did have a lot of fun die cutting everything and placing it kind of where I wanted it to go. So I really am enjoying this set, you guys, wow. You know, these dies are so pretty by themselves too. You can make a whole fall card that features just the mushrooms or just the gourds or even just the acorns and get a really kind of beautiful, simple card. But I am just loving the style of this whole collection. Oh, I don't want to put two mushrooms together. Maybe I'll have another little mushroom growing somewhere. No, you know, I think three looks really good. I don't want to waste this mushroom. Should we tuck it somewhere? Maybe I'll have it growing over here. No, you know, I think I'm just going to hold off. This mushroom will go on another project because well, maybe I'll put it here. Yeah, we'll put it here. Sometimes when I wait and I put it on another project, it just gets lost in my craft room anyway. And this goes with the theme of the card, and I do love the way that that looks. Oh, I'm so glad I put it there. Okay, fabulous. This is my fall envelope of wonder, which or autumn, autumn wonder. 
using the Autumn Wonder and Envelope of Wonder set. Look how pretty that is. I think to finish this off, I could add a sentiment from the Better Press or the Stamp Sentiments to finish it off, but I think I'm just going to let all the little pieces speak for themselves on this one. Now that I'm all finished with the Fall or the Autumn Envelope of Wonder, I'll show you the other two. For this one, I chose Halloween and I went with kind of a cutesy Halloween card with some bright colors and this little cat is just adorable. I love the little pumpkin hat for the cat. And then I added some glitter paper and some bright colored cardstock just to kind of make everything pop. That was a really fun card to make. And then I also made another envelope style card with the envelope of wonder set with the beautiful flowers and added a little bit of sequins and then I put Mr. and Mrs. because I thought this would be kind of fun to add on top of a wedding present or perhaps to be glued onto a 5x7 card. You can see the back is looking a little shabby chic here. <laughs> I used a beautiful 3D embossing folder to put on the back of this and I just thought that that gave so much texture. I will link that embossing folder in the description. It's one of my favorites. I keep pulling for it over and over again. So anyway, let me know what you think about these three projects in the comments. I'd love to know your favorite. I think, mm, I think if I had a favorite, I'd say it's the fall one just because I love fall so much and I just love the colors of this one. It's just full of leaves, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. If you haven't, go ahead and check out my announcement video that I posted yesterday. Tomorrow I'm going to be showing a special project with the Snow Garden collection from Susan Tierney Cockburn. So stay, so go ahead and subscribe and come back tomorrow for that special project. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. I hope you get to craft soon. Today is Friday, so why not craft? <laughs> could insert any day of the week and I would be all for it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.